In this video, we'll talk about muscle pumping diet. High protein diets such as Zone, Atkins, and Sugar Busters have come and gone for decades, their popularity rising and falling like waves in the ocean. While high protein diets do usually lead to weight loss, they may be unbalanced meal plans that sometimes restrict entire food groups and fail to meet humans' essential needs for vitamins, minerals, and fiber. However, that doesn't have to be the case. Several studies comparing high-protein, low-carbohydrate diets with high-carbohydrate, low-protein diets found high-protein diets to be just as effective and sometimes even more effective. Did you know that protein is one of the nutrients along with carbohydrate, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water? The source of all of these nutrients is good. Some food contains much higher amounts of specific nutrients than others, and sometimes we refer to certain foods as protein food. It's important to realize that all food contains more than one nutrient and most food contains substantial amounts of several nutrients. For example, meat, which is a good source of protein, carbohydrates, fat, riboflavin, and calcium. Protein is an essential nutrient. There is no life without protein. Protein is contained in every part of your body, the skin, hair, blood, body organs, eyes, even fingernails and bone. So why exactly is protein so important? Protein has a critical physiological function. It is primarily used in the body to build, maintain, and repair body tissues. In the event that protein intake is greater than that required by the body for this primary function, excessive protein is converted to energy for immediate use or stored in the body as fat. Protein energy will be used only after other energy sources, carbohydrates and fat, are exhausted or unavailable. Protein is available from both animal and plant sources. The typical U.S. diet is a mixture of protein sources. Variety and choices will provide an adequate diet. The following are some examples of protein content in some typical food. 3 ounces of chicken contains 20 grams of protein. 3 ounces of ground beef contains 21 grams of protein. 2 ounces of pork chop contains 15 grams of protein. 3 quarters of a cup of beans contains 11 grams of protein. 2 tablespoons of peanut butter contains 8 grams of protein. 1 half cup of soybeans contains 10 grams of protein. And if you're wondering about the protein serving size, here's some references. 1 ounce of meat is equal to the size of a matchbox. 3 ounces of meat is equal to the size of a deck of cards. 1 ounce of cheese is equal to the size of 4 dice or 1 slice. 2 tablespoons of nut butter is equal to the size of a ping pong ball. The amount of protein needed varies for different age groups, size, and growth stages. Even though an adult has achieved maximum growth, protein is required for maintaining body tissues. Periods of growth, including infancy, childhood, and pregnancy, increase the protein need to provide building materials. Physiological states such as injury, surgery, or burns increase the need for protein to provide repairing materials. Surveys have shown that Americans eat almost twice as much protein as their bodies need. This is probably because of ample supplies of high-quality protein and a preference for meat and other animal sources of protein. Food consumption surveys show an average protein intake of approximately 100 grams per day. About 70% of the protein is from animal products. The total protein intake supplies 12% of the total calories. Even with average intakes which are high, some segments of our population may have marginal protein intakes including low-income, elderly, and pregnant and lactating women. In less developed countries, the protein deficiency disease Kwashiorkor is seen in growing children. Now let's talk about protein powder. It has become a popular protein source for people trying to improve athletic performance and build muscle mass. For people with cancer, they can provide necessary protein to their diet and help maintain muscle tissue during treatments when experiencing a lack of appetite for eating meats or other high-protein foods. Avoid protein powder that contains other ingredients such as creatine, vitamins, or minerals. While these may be high in protein, they tend to be low in calories, so adding higher calorie additions can be beneficial. Did you know that whey protein concentrate is very common and the most affordable form of whey protein? It does contain some lactose. Whey protein isolate is a more concentrated form of whey protein with little to no fat or lactose. 
it's an acceptable protein source for people on a lactose restricted diet or with lactose intolerance. Hemp protein is a near complete plant based vegan protein that offers the inflammation fighting power of omega 3 essential fatty acids and is high in fiber. Pea protein powder is a plant based protein, vegan, and highly digestible. It has a fluffy texture. Soy protein powder comes in either soy protein isolate or soy protein concentrate. Compared to dairy-based protein powders, soy protein powders do not dissolve as well, may have a beanie taste, and can cause gas for people sensitive to soy sugars. Furthermore, there are so many ways that you can add more protein into your diet. Cheese. Melt your cheese on sandwiches, breads, tortillas, hamburgers, hot dogs, other meats or fish, vegetables, eggs, or desserts such as stewed fruits or pies. Or you can grate it and add it to soups, sauces, casseroles, vegetable dishes, mashed potatoes, rice, noodles, or meatloaf. Cottage cheese or ricotta cheese. Mix with or use with fruits and vegetables. Add them to casseroles, spaghetti, noodles, and egg dishes such as omelets, scrambled eggs, and souffles. Milk or soy milk. Use in beverages, cooking, hot cereals, soups, cocas, and puddings in place of water. Dry milk powder. You can choose to add this to regular milk and milk drinks such as pasteurized eggnog and milkshakes or use in casseroles, meatloaf, breads, muffins, sauces, or any milk-based dessert. Yogurt. Add yogurt to cereals, fruits, gelatin, and pies, or you can blend or whip with soft or cooked fruits. You can even sandwich ice cream or frozen yogurt between pound cake, cookies, or graham crackers. Eggs. Add chopped, hard-cooked eggs to salads and dressings, vegetables, casseroles, and meat salads. Add extra eggs or egg whites to quiches, pancakes, and french toast. Add extra egg whites to scrambled eggs and omelets. Egg whites are a great way to add more protein without saturated fat or cholesterol. Nuts, seeds, wheat germs, and oats. In fact, there are several ways to add them into your diet. You can sprinkle them on fruit, cereal, ice cream, yogurt, vegetables, salads, and toast as a crunchy topping. Or you can blend them with parsley, spinach, herbs, and cream for a noodle, pasta, or vegetable sauce. Meat and fish. Add chopped cooked meat and fish to vegetables, salads, casseroles, soups, or sauces. You can use them in omelets, sandwich fillings, and chicken stuffing. We all know that a high protein diet is good for muscle building, however, please do not take excessive protein. Excessive intake of protein will lead you to certain health risks. Some of the examples of health risks include ketosis, colorectal cancer, heart disease, and kidney disease. In addition, there are certain types of protein that you need to take note of. Fat. Although research has shown that high protein diets produce positive effects on blood glucose and blood lipid levels by decreasing circulating insulin, reducing triglycerides, and raising HDL levels, there is minimal effect on LDL levels, it's important to remember that even with an emphasis on lean protein, this type of diet is still higher in total fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol than lower protein, high carbohydrate diets, and long-term effects remain unknown. Red meat. High protein diets tend to be heavy on red meat. Even though data is inconclusive, high intakes of both red meat and processed meats, particularly if cooked at high temperatures, have been linked to an increased risk of diverticulitis in men. Calcium Since high protein diets are directly related to a higher output of urinary calcium, researchers in the 1990s concluded that high protein intakes had an adverse effect on bones. We now know that's not the case. If accompanied by adequate calcium, about three servings of low-fat dairy per day or the equivalent, high-protein diets can not only increase calcium uptake, absorbing as much as 25%, but also enhance bone health, preserving bone even during weight loss, according to a 2008 Journal of Nutrition study. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.